Wait, did Supernatural just do something scary? Hey guys, this is my review for episode 13 of season 12 of Supernatural. It's funny enough that I was talking about something earlier on a few episodes back, and especially with doing the retro reviews of Supernatural, that this show really hasn't been scary at all in the last little while. So, the episode begins with this setup of this woman just kind of doing daily things before she goes to bed. There's this part where she opens up the cupboard and there's this dramatic music but nothing happens. And the whole time it's like, okay, this has been, this has been two and a half minutes, nothing's happened. And then she's in the bed and this long, slow pull in. And the whole time I'm going, what is actually going to, and then Hannah has to spring out of the bed and rip her apart. I'm like, oh, okay, that was good. However, the rest of the episode kind of runs at a very flat pace. What turns out is that there's this ghost that is attached to the boat that Crowley's son was originally supposed to embark on, but then through all the time travel weird ass crap in season 10 or 11, no, season 9 if I'm correct, all that screwed it up and now his old girlfriend who smuggled herself aboard the boat is trying to, well, basically killing people who are related to teachers. That was actually a cool reason why she was killing people. The whole teachers not protecting people sort of ideal. And kind of a little bit meta of what's going on with the whole Betty DeVos stuff, but you know what? Either way, that was kind of cool. But the thing is, this episode had a lot of pieces, little pieces here and there of stuff that was interesting. These pieces weren't fully established. They were just more so like laying blocks for next episodes that are coming up. For instance, the woman who's walking around with Lucifer's baby bumped into one of the other princes of hell that was mentioned in the previous episode with that last guy and she had the most ham-fisted terminator reference come with me if you want to live that was yeah but that was it we had like maybe three minutes of them in total and again a little bling block the other one was mary's uh, connection with the men of letters and how she's using this cool like weird gun to kill a Rougarou. Again, there was cool interesting talks with the super awesome British, British Men of Letters guy and he's talking about how, you know, family's gonna hold you down, this is a priority, is to try and take this out. Mary Winters was like, no, we gotta do this, and I don't know. Mary Winters' character has been very interesting. The fact that she's come back from the dead, and let's just be clear here, the last time she died, she had given up hunting. She had actually done it. She had just totally given it up. And the instant she comes back, boom, she's right back into hunting again. So, I don't know. They're not really going to, they haven't really explained that wanting to jump right back into it. Maybe it's an idea that she's just protecting herself, kind of protecting her own mentality and her own sort of psychosis from the idea of jumping 30 years into the future. But either way. And then... Supernatural actually pulled a fast one on me. It started off with the whole, we've got bupkis on the baby, oh, blah, 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 blah. oh, well, we've got this case. And that's how every filler episode has ever started. And in the end, this actually turned out to be a story episode. So good on you, Supernatural, you actually tricked me there. And then there's also the part with Crowley and Lucifer. It turns out I was right about how I said that Lucifer really didn't actually get expunged into the cage that there was something done that messed up or changed the process of how the the exorcism happened. And it turns out that Crowley just put him back into Mark Pellerino's body who they fixed somehow, mainly just because Mark Pellerino's awesome as Lucifer. They realized that because the rocker guy couldn't cut it. And they now say, yeah, I'm basically gonna treat you like how you treated me. And Lucifer straight up says exactly what every Supernatural fan is thinking. What do you think is going to happen? And really, honestly, what is going to happen? I think the showrunners realize that when they put Lucifer back in the cage at with the whole mid-season finale, they're like, shit, we have nothing. Crick, make sure he comes back somehow. So, I'm really, this season's kind of nicking me off. But then how it ends with that really kind of cheesy sort of ghost whisperer montage at the end. Hell, this episode actually ended like a ghost whisperer show. Like, they got the two, the real person and the ghost together, and they sent them back in time, and it was all wishy-washy. But mind you, I thought that was subtle. It wasn't overly emotional and overly 
ridiculously dramatic, like when Cass was dying in the last episode. This was subtle. But after that whole montage bit, we see Lucifer call out the name of the Prince of Hell that is protecting his child. And again, right when he, that right there is like, yeah, gosh, what the hell did they think was going to happen? How on earth do the writers think that we are so stupid that this is not, I don't know. I just don't like this turn. Sure, obviously they had to bring back Lucifer because they have no threat of this season, but just the way in which they've done it is kind of po it's like they're insulting our intelligence almost. Either way, this episode was subtle, it had some cool elements, none of them were really fully defined, but it was still an enjoyable episode. It's not exceptional by any means, but it is definitely setting the plates for what's going to come next. So in the end, I'm going to give this episode a 4 out of 7. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this review. Keep uh, watching all my retro reviews. I'm going to talk about skin next, so I'm looking forward to that. Anyways, catch you guys later.